Welcome to Minutes by Minutes. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. And we're here to talk about what goes on in the village, the township. You know those people that make laws and regulations and ordinances that affect you there. That's right, Elgin. And whether you live in the village of Oxford, the village of Leonard, Oxford Township, or Addison Township, uh, these are the people that you elected. And the commissions and the committees that make all those decisions that affect you. Whether you chose to go to that meeting or not, even though you should have. <laughs> And the result can be a very taxing situation. Or a very humorous one. It couldn't come back. Uh -huh. You'll see the humor <laughs> later. Other people will laugh. <laughs> right. As David said, you should attend these meetings to find out what's going on in your neighborhood. It could be a lot of things happening, you know. There always are. Yep. And if you, for some reason, miss a meeting, you could also see it on our television station by going to our website. OCCTV.org. OCC mm -hmm. And click on Programs and... They're off and running. See that? I have the train monkey working. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Okay, let's talk about some meetings that occurred last week then, shall we? One is the Village of Oxford Planning Commission meeting, and that was held September 5th. And another meeting actually was held a little before that, and it was August uh, 30th, and it's the Oxford Township Board of Trustees, but a special meeting. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll do the latest first. Special meetings are usually single-subject meetings, aren't they? They are, and there's a real reason for this one being special. <laughs> Maybe it's extra special. Who knows? It's extra special, <laughs> yes. And it was. And uh, it actually was a long-running meeting for what it started out to be. So, But we'll tell you more when we get into it. Let's talk about the Village of Oxford Planning Commission meeting. Um, Gary uh, Douglas is the uh, chair for that, that particular committee or commission. Jack Curtis from the township serves on that commission. And Rose Bema, who has served on several committees and so forth uh, for the village, uh, serves on that uh, planning commission. Gary Deeg, who was absent that, the other evening. And uh, Russell Gill also mm -hmm. was, uh, was, I was going to say, missing in action. But they still had a quorum. They still had a quorum, yep. And by the way, the, their absence was approved. So. They're not going to have the pitchforks waiting for them when they get they back. They have a note from their mom or what? They could have. <laughs> Maureen Helmo serves on that board. Okay. And she serves on the village council also. Mm -hmm. And that's an interesting subject. The village council, what's going on over there? <laughs> I don't know. It sounds Silence. special to me. Silence. Okay. But that doesn't have anything to do with the planning commission meeting. Well, in a way it does, and I'll tell you further down the line here how it does. Adam Johnson serves, serves on this board also. They did the pledge, of course, got the preliminaries pretty much uh, taken care of. Uh, they covered the agenda and what was going to occur that evening, and everything was approved, surprisingly, and not surprisingly, in minutes, uh, approved August 1st, 2017 minutes. So they we'll move right along on this thing, right? And then? And then? And then? <laughs> and then it happened. Okay. Step by step, <laughs> inch by inch. They said, public <laughs> hearing. Well, there is no public hearing. See how fast we're moving? Okay, uh, no public hearing, but the next thing was old business. And uh, th that was an interesting subject because uh, Dave Weckel, who's a developer contractor There's in Oxford. no business like old business. <laughs> That's what it would be. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but this is good business because uh, he's building a complex of three buildings over mm -hmm. in that area. And starting out with his, uh, what he calls, um, Project B. A, B, and C, and starting with B first. And the building has changed a little bit in terms of um, the way it's going to look. Is this the office building? Uh, it's going to be a combination of office and, I think, uh, condos on okay. a higher level. Because this is a pretty, pretty tall building. Actually, the you ordinance- You mean a second level, not a higher level. A higher level. <laughs> <laughs> not that high a level. <laughs> but there's a turret, a turret, and they were discussing what a turret is. You know what a turret is? A turret? Turret. I got you, didn't I? Okay. Well, I mean, it's usually round shape or at least octagonal. <laughs> and usually there's a stairway to get up there, mm -hmm. and they use it in castles, usually. Right? I see. And uh, in case the rest of the castle cut, uh, catches on fire. Is it castellated? It's castellated. Little cannon slots. <laughs> kid, little cannon slots, yeah. Anyway, I think they they have a bucket of water just in case the rest of the, the castle catches fire, and they're at the highest level. Or they're being stormed. <laughs> Or they're being stormed, yeah, one or the other. So anyway, he's going to have one of these <laughs> rascals, uh, a turret, and so they discussed what, what actually a turret was, and, and uh, <laughs> Commissioner Helmuth actually looked it up on her computer and, and read word for word what the dictionary said a turret was. So anyway, so we got all, all educated. If you want to catch this, this you can do it. This one has a pointy top? 
Here's a pointy top. Oh, okie dokie. <laughs> okie dokie. Okay, so anyway, the Rapunzel, issue was... Rapunzel, No. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's another story. Oh, okay. um, uh, actually, the ordinance, the village ordinance, uh, has a limit to the height of the building, and the height of the building is 40 um, feet high. That's as tall as you can go. There are other, there are other buildings in Oxford that have turrets. They do, but and they're one not. one has a copper top. Right, but they're <laughs> not any higher than 40 feet high now. Or, and this one will be. This one will be 40 feet and eight inches with a turret. So they they had to get the approval from the site plan to, in order to move ahead because the uh, the building structures looked a little different now. I see. You're talking building roughly about 60 by 60. Is this strictly a uh, a decorative turret, or does it have a function? Well, I can't imagine um, Dave uh, Weckl building something that strictly has a cosmetic look to it without <laughs> being functional. I see. So it must have a use for it. Okay. Uh, like I said, if there's a fire down below, you go to the high level <laughs> with your bucket of water. We'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. But the first thing that has to happen, according <coughs> to the agreement, in which he can build these uh, structures is to uh, start on the parking lot and do the parking lot first. And that was part of his agreement. So he said, uh, in speaking before the uh, Planning Commission, he said, we um, are in the process of, of tearing down buildings right now, a single building. And I'm trying to think where that building was at, but it's uh, next to... This, this is the one right on Burdick Street, right? Uh, yeah, this is on Burdick Street. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and it'll come to me down the line here. Unfortunately, it just it's went on a train down the... East of the post the office? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that would be where it would be. I'm trying to think of the East name of the street. East of the street. post office? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Okay. West of the barbershop? Yeah, somewhere in the, <laughs> the neighborhood. Man, that's that's a big area. they got about 200 miles between the two. <laughs> okay. Not quite 200 miles. But anyway, so he uh, has indicated to the Planning Commission that he's in progress of... Uh, eliminating one of the buildings and um, getting ready for the parking lot. And the second building, he said, will probably more than likely be demolished as well down the line. So he said the progress is in, in the works. Okay? Good. So, good thing for uh, Dave Weckel. He was well received, of course, by the Planning Commission. Dave usually comes very well prepared to those meetings. Yeah. It just came to me where that building is at, Stanton Street. Right off Stanton Street, and he's going to wipe that right out of there. Okay. See, you folks, if you see a building one morning and next morning, is that morning the one adult, that goes behind the theater? Yeah. Okay. It does. Mm -hmm. Okay. So anyway, so that's where we are on uh, Dave Weckel. Uh, and by the way, you'll see progress, more extensive progress this fall, because he's going to really get into this thing, get that building uh, structure, what he calls Project B, on the way. Get and those get, that frame, get those frames up. Get those frames up. <laughs> get those turrets up. <laughs> Got to do that. So anyway, on, uh, let me see what else. There's approval with condition, and Jack Curtis made the approval of the site plan to go ahead and go forward with it, and it was, of course, uh, unanimous. What was the condition? Uh, condition is that the parking lot be completed. Oh, okay. Okay, which is the original agreement. All right. Uh, let me see, what else did he have? Chris Corey, by the way, uh, went through a presentation on this, and he recommended that they go forward. So it was pretty easy. Subject. He is the planner? He is the planning. Uh, yep, consultant for the village. And with that, we'll talk more about this when we come back, right after this. Canine Stray Rescue is Oxford's own local dog rescue. Call them at 248-628-0435 or go to their website, dogsaver.org, and click on the K9 Stray Rescue League link. Welcome back to Minutes by Minutes. I'm Algin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. <laughs> I had to do this in order for him to comprehend what I was about to say. <laughs> he does comprehend, as you can see. Okay. But uh, planning commission meeting uh, with the village. And uh, very interesting. Uh, Dave Weckel, his project is approved to go forward. And uh, next thing was the sign ordinance. And that one is kind of <laughs> one that is kind of a sticky wicket. Been dipping that one in and wringing it out for years. <laughs> yes, they have. And they attempted <clears throat> to suggest to the village council to go forward with a sign that would be mm -hmm. 32 square feet. In other words, a 4 by 8 size sign. Mm -hmm. And the point of mm -hmm. it was that there's so many 4 by 8 
put signs out there that have been approved through special use in the past that why not just if you make do it, it an ordinance and they make it a standard. Right. You know? If you do it often enough, it well, becomes the truth. Well, that was the Planning Commission's <laughs> uh, idea to do this and send it to the Village Council. Yeah, good. The Village Council nicked it. They said no. They said if we change it now to 32 square feet, they're going to want to have a 42 square feet next time. And if so let's keep violating the ordinance. <laughs> yeah, right. So anyway, the Planning Commission said they're tired of giving these special uh, uh, well, permits. Do, do people have this. to pay to come and request this? Uh, not the initial meeting, but once they get into it and they have to provide a, a plan for it, once it's approved. So it's costing well, it's time co and money and well, yeah, maybe unnecessarily. Yeah, and if you've got people that are inspecting the property and that kind of thing, you know, in advance, it's costing the village in terms of, mm -hmm. you know, inspectors and so forth. So uh, there's some expense involved. And, they, of course, they have to apply for, you know, the permit in the first place in the office. So you're taking up office time as well. So there's expense involved. Yes, there is. Oh, well. Okay. But anyway, so um, actually uh, the uh, uh, president or the chairperson, Gary uh, Douglas, was very upset over this. He said that uh, precedent has already been established. So what's going to mm -hmm. happen, he said, now it's been kicked back to us and not approved. How are we going to explain to people, well, the guy down the street and the five or six people down the street all have you know, 32 square foot. And we have to tell him that he can't have it, you know. So that's an issue. And he said that it actually has been set as a precedent. And uh, Maureen Helmut says, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. That's not really a precedent because uh, the Planning Commission can establish whatever they need based on the criteria of what they have before them. <sighs> <laughs> so there we have it. But anyway, he was very upset. And I think... So uh, circle on back. <laughs> yeah. And I can see his frustration mm -hmm. in this, too, because even when I was on the... <laughs> on the console, um, I, I think that was a subject that you know needed to be changed too, because I could see 32 square feet as being the standard. When I was in business, four by eight sign was pretty standard. What do know? they do in other towns? Do they ever do best practices here? Well, other towns pretty much set the standard like they do here in the village for whatever. Yeah, but now up in the Bay City area, um, 32 square feet is pretty standard. Mm -hmm. Four by eight sheet is usually what you work with. Yeah, and if it's a um, a light is signed, 4 by 8 is pretty standard, although you can go with a 5 by whatever um, as well. So there's different, different criteria requirements in terms of ordinances for different villages and for different cities. So. And so it goes. Yep. And of course, <laughs> this is a rather unique town in the fact that uh, you want to keep the old age look to it. So you don't want want flashing on and off lights, you know, as you go through town, that kind of thing. Cars. <laughs> Take the blinkers <laughs> off the cars. By the way, that's one of my pet peeves. People don't use blinkers. I think the, uh, the automobile companies could save a ton of money if they just take the blinker off <laughs> and cut the cost of the car. When I drove that Corvair in the Lone Ranger parade, I had to ask someone, what was the hand signal you used? <laughs> yeah, it was. So the thing didn't have any. <laughs> you used to do that when you were a kid, probably. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, but yeah. So but soon you forget. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, it did work out, though. Nobody ran over us. So no, no. I, don't I watch out for those blinkers. <laughs> <laughs> Especially sign blinkers. So they don't want sign blinkers downtown, so you won't see those. But there are uh, some LED signs out there. The bank has mm -hmm. one. I think a couple of mm -hmm. uh, credit union has one. But they're actually special uh, permit uses. Um, use, uses for those signs, and they have to be approved by the Planning Commission. And they were. So they, do they have a standard for yeah. electronic signs? Yep. As far as the color and so forth that can be used. And the rapidity and with which it changes. Copy. Yeah. Changeable yeah. copy is within certain period of increments. Sure. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't confuse the traffic when they go by. So Or blind them. Or blind them. <laughs> <laughs> or even the neighbors. Too bright. <laughs> okay. And that's a concern, too. Mm -hmm. But I think as mm -hmm. uh, you know, technology moves along, I think it's only another subject that they're going to have to be readdressed down the line again. I don't think it's going to go away. But anyway, uh, even though uh, uh, the chairperson, Gary uh, uh, Douglas, was very upset with this, he said, uh, you know, he'll go along with whatever, you know, village council instructs him to do, or them to do. I think that's summarized by harumph. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, Chris Corey then talked about setbacks, too, and he said that, you know, um, mm -hmm. setback is normally 20 feet within town. Uh, three feet from the sidewalk, three feet from the building. So Are if you, you have an upright sign. setbacks for buildings or setbacks for, for a sign? sign? Okay, yeah. okay. Signs four feet high, roughly, in height. Uh, 
you know. So depending on the size of the sign determines plus, you know, the distance required. So they, they said, he, he said go ahead and move that uh, mm -hmm. to do an aden amendment to it. And so he advised that. They did go forward with the amendment. So that was taken care of. New business, guess what? What? Nothing's new. <laughs> okay, didn't go new. Uh, public comment, Suba Sardet, uh, she wanted to introduce Glenn uh, Pape, who is the new DDA director. So uh, okay. Mr. Pape stood up to the microphone and, and answered a few questions, you know, from the, uh, from the planning commissioners. And um, he was, you know, quite cordial. One yeah. slot filled, one, one to go. One slot, oh. Oh, two to go. Two to go, <laughs> yeah. The village doesn't have a, well, they got a temporary clerk that's filling in. Right. Uh, Sue Nasser, but who there's was, no one. Who was the permanent clerk? <laughs> well, there's a revolving but, but, door. <laughs> well, just when she's out, they yeah. put her back in. <laughs> right, and of course, um, Mr. Teach is the uh, village manager. Evan. Evan, not Kevin. Evan. Right. Okay, <laughs> right. Evan Teach, and uh, he's, he, they asked him how long he was going to be in that position. He said, well, as long as uh, they haven't hired somebody, you know, for mm -hmm. the position for village manager, and even after mm -hmm. they hire him or her, then he will stay on to make sure that individual is trained. To transition. Yeah. And uh, he said he, that they're interviewing right now. He works so. for a, a company that supplies these services, right? He does do that. Okay. Yep. I believe that company's out of Rochester, but uh, okay. that could be just a rumor that he, he's trying to spread. Okay, uh, uh, Chris Corey, uh, the consultant, um, let me see, what did he say he wanted to do? Down, downtown signs, we covered that. Oh, he said there's one in the future that's coming up and that is Oxford Bank wants to review a downtown sign. They've so, already Yeah, they already have sign, one right? there, but apparently he wants to change it or I don't know all the specifics, but you folks watch the meetings here for Planning Commission, you'll learn more. It sounds move like along. sign envy is taking place here. It could be. Your <laughs> sign's bigger than mine. <laughs> Your sign's brighter than mine. Watch this. <laughs> yeah, watch what we're going to do. We're a three-dimensional sign. <laughs> Whatever they're going to do. Okay, so anyway, signs will continue to be a, a subject. In other words, it's a sign of things to come. I see. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. So anyway, um, denied. Um, Jack. Curtis want to make sure that uh, people were aware of the Beehive Homes, which is the uh, senior home development that was going to go in, has been declined by the township, will not be going into that location. And also the Waterstone project uh, to change zoning from C C1 to R RM has also been denied. That was part and parcel of that. Yes. And uh, so it's pointed out though by Chris Corey that Beehive Homes is still interested in property, but in the village. Uh, there might be a location that's going to work for them in the village. So, with that, uh, Evan Teach, he was introduced uh, to the uh, Planning Commission. He made a few statements and he will be involved in the DDA, I guess, uh, attending the special trust, uh, task force meeting that's coming up. And with that, we'll be back right after this. Welcome back to Minutes by Minutes. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. And we have just been talking about the Village Planning Commission meeting, and now we're going to talk about the Oxford Township Board of Trustees meeting, special meeting, which was held on August 30th. Usually single subject. <laughs> yeah, single subject. Uh, Bill Dunn, of course, is the chair and the supervisor of the township. Joe Ferrari, who is the treasurer. treasurer. And uh, Curtis Wright, who is the clerk. Let me look at my flashcards. Clerk, yes. Yeah, <laughs> Okay, you missed that one. It's moving rather quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, Jack Curtis, of course, serves as a trustee. Uh, Patty Durr, uh, Marjorie Payne, and, of course, yours truly, Elgin Nichols, serves on that board. Oh, he's got a glow about him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you folks put me there. So, anyway, hopefully I do the right thing. If not, you, you tell me I'm not. Okay, they went to the pledge, yeah, did all the pre uh, preliminaries, got them out of the way. Um, minutes were approved for August 9th. And then they asked for any public comment. Mm, no, no public comment. 
Nobody wanted to speak up at that point, but there's plenty of people to speak later. They went to a special public hearing. Once they've been poked. <laughs> yeah, once they've been poked. <laughs> Stabbed with a prod, whatever. Uh, didn't take a prod in order to make them do this, but uh, Elk View Special Assessment District is what oh, came no. up. Remember, we talked about that before. Yeah, it's sort of a deep subject. Oh, kind of a swampy thing. Yes. <laughs> There's water. Can you say, I'm trading water? Kind of like in Houston. Almost. Our, Harvey, oh, not quite we've that got bad, but, Yeah, right. <laughs> this, this litigation between the residents and the township has been going on for ever. 17 years. Can you believe that? 17 yep. years. And there were uh, points <clears throat> when they thought it was going to be <clears throat> settled. Uh, as far as the drainage and yeah. so forth, and, and who's I thought, responsible? I thought Oxford Township was going to step in and make corrections. Yeah. Well, they stepped in, all right, and they tried to make corrections, but the residency at that time didn't want to listen or approve what the township was recommending. So they ended up in litigation as impasse. Now, given the history of this particular subdivision, it actually was under the control of several um, developers. Developers. That's the word I'm looking for. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, so as things turned along, um, as each developer left, they negated full responsibility of what the, the water issues were. They did a punchous pilot. Yep. So then, of course, uh, the residents turned to the township. They said, well, you know, you should never have approved this. And a whole lot of things went on, what Bill would call crap. That went on. So anyway, 17 years worth of it, of uh, shoveling. <laughs> and finally, they reached the point where the courts uh, uh, set an agreement between um, the residents and the township. And anyway, when uh, asked to speak at this point, a fellow named Lauren Allen, who has been very active in this thing for the last 17 years, has spent his own money and you know others too. They put together a committee to, to battle this thing. And um, he said, well, we have one complaint, major complaint. We see now that uh, you're looking for over $19,900, almost $20,000 uh, from each resident. For from each resident? Yeah, for 20 years. How many He's, residents are there? Well, there's like 21 residents. And he said, but that's, that's excessive. That's not what we agreed to, is he that, said, in the court action. Is that in the form of a special assessment district? It is. It's got to be under SAD, and it's got to be approved by the residents in order to do that. And it was approved according to the courts, okay? Oh. Between the courts and the, the lawyers, township. Probably yeah. the lawyers. Yeah, the lawyers. <laughs> yeah, between the lawyers. You're right about that. Hmm. So anyway, um, he said, well, that's, that's outrageous. The agreed upon amount was like $14,000. You know, overall, uh, for the period of 20 years. Maybe that was 17 years ago. Yeah, 17 years ago. And uh, maybe it might have been. Uh -huh. But anyway, uh, so Bill Dunn says, hmm. He said, that doesn't quite sound right either. He said, it sounds to me like, he said, there's a discrepancy in the way the calculation was put together. And uh, so he said, we'll take a 10 minute uh, break and hopefully our attorney will get here because he's supposed to arrive. And that's Gary Winthrop, who represents the uh, township. And he was running late and didn't make it, so Bill wanted to make sure that he had the time to make it. The guy did show up. The attorney did show up, and he explained that the, the money agreed upon in the courts was actually a proposal and a calculation given by the county. And um, so they... Uh, the lower number or the higher number? The higher number. I see. So they, amongst themselves, uh, the trustees, figured out with the total amount, which is four hundred sixty some thousand dollars for the or four ninety five, four hundred ninety five thousand for the whole project. Actually, it'll cost more than that. The township eventually around six hundred thousand or so. Yeah, really. Uh, but they had a conference uh, communications between all the trustees, and they recalculated everything. They said, well, the original figure of fourteen thousand appears to be correct. You know, in in the declaration from the court. So they figured it out and they said every person, every resident would pay $700 per year for on their taxes towards this for 20 years. Okay? And uh, boy, they were ecstatic. I mean, I think I saw a couple of Snoopy dancers out there. <laughs> <laughs> they thought that was pretty good. And actually... Uh, what, what, what is the nature of the remediation? Well, okay, the remediation was that uh, they would purchase property, which is a wetlands area, uh, the township would, and uh, under the SAD, and they will also run piping and so forth to, to provide drainage to the wetland area. And wasn't so it's there, a big wasn't project. There, wasn't there an issue before where one guy said that, you know, 
everybody else gets dry land, but mine seems to be affected. Wasn't that a, a problem? That's been solved. The uh, they're gonna, they're, actually, the pipe ended up in about the middle of his property, so oh. the water was going to drain <laughs> into his property. Not a good setup. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so he had but, a, but they took care of that. Yeah, he had a viable complaint, I think. <laughs> So he just sent back his aqua long on his fins and everything. <laughs> Got a discount. <laughs> and a thank you note. <laughs> yeah, right. And so Bill Dunn made sure that was taken care of and that the pipe is going to be run oh, right. you know, into the wetlands area. So he's pretty happy over that. There's light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, there was. Uh, the, right after water the water tunnel. <laughs> right. So anyway, so it looks like finally after 17 years, this, this thing has finally come to a conclusion. And all the documents are signed by both sides. But now we had a question that came up. And how is it going to be handled in terms of the tax rolls? You know? And the attorney, uh, Mr. Winthrop, he said, well, what you should do is keep to the schedule you have, the 19000 whatever, and provide a credit you know, to the tax bill showing the amount that you do. Well, according to... 19000 uh, I thought yeah, it was 14000 No, it was 19000 according to... And that's the way it was set up for the county. And that's the way it looks right now. Oh. But it would be... 14,000 is what it's going to come down to. <clears throat> well, our treasurer, who's a pretty sharp guy, um, he said, uh, well, it would cost us more money to begin with. He said we were to do that because it'd have to be approved every year uh, to, to get this uh, authorized. You're, you're talking attorney's fees and other things that are going to come into play. Uh, he felt that uh, the best route to go is just immediately decide to go with $700 on the bill and show it for what it is. And uh, three of the people on the board disagreed and four agreed with uh, the treasurer that they should go forward with uh, that approach to it. And so at so some Joe point Ferrari, in time, does that run them into trouble with the county? Well, they're, according to the attorney, you could have a problem um, in terms of uh, uh, a co the court order and the SAD uh, against consent judgment. Uh, could pose a problem. And Joe Ferrari says, well, who's going to complain with a reduction? <laughs> well, would cut the cost. Uh, well, they could they could reduce the taxes on the properties themselves. Period. The regular taxes. Well, they could do that, but that's not it's going to happen under this pr proposal. Okay. Joe Ferrari, I guess I have a confidence confidence in him that he's he's pretty sharp when it comes to finances, mm -hmm. and he know he's the one that's going to have to handle this thing when it comes down to it. And so you know you have a choice here, attorney. I guess if I need an attorney, I get an attorney. But if I was going to go for somebody who uh, has a financial background, I'd definitely go with Joe Ferrari. And that's what everybody did. And uh, they voted to go with Joe's row. Good. So anyway, uh, one more thing I want to mention. Problem solved? Problem solved. It's done. Complete. 17 years, folks. You can do a Snoopy dance now because it's your money. Okay. Mm. Now it in and wringing <laughs> it out for 17 years. That's a clean cloth. It now. is. <laughs> one thing I want to mention is the uh, Century uh, 21 uh, has a... A program going for the help for Houston and uh, they got a drop drop off location <laughs> at Oxford at 850 Lapeer Road and one in Lapeer at 421 South Main Street and one in Novi at 420 020A Grand River Road. Now their phone number is 248-628-4818 and what are they looking for? Well they're looking for non-perishable foods that include low sugar and low sodium and bottled water and shrink wrap, thank you, paper plates and bowls, dry pet food, toiletries, diapers, plastic cutlery. They all need that stuff down there. Well, uh, that's what's going on in Houston. You help those folks out, okay? Now, what's betcha. going on here? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> on 918 at 6 o'clock, the Addison Township Board is meeting, and also at 6 o'clock, the Village of Oxford DDA, Downtown Development Authority. I would be on, on 919, that one. we got a pack of, of meetings. At 7 o'clock, the Addison Township Fire Board, same time. At 7 o'clock, the Addison Township uh, Library Board. And I had to read my writing. Shorthand. 7 o'clock, <laughs> the Village of Oxford Planning Commission, again. And at 630, Oxford Board of Education meeting at the board offices in downtown Oxford. And on 920, the 3 o'clock, the Polyantrail Management Council meeting in the Village of Oxford offices. And on 921, at 7 o'clock, the Village of Leonard Council is meeting. And at 430 earlier that day, the NOTA, North Oakland Transportation Authority, will be meeting at the NOTA board offices in Lake Orion. Lots going on, but if you should miss this meeting or lots of other meetings, then you catch us on OCTV.org. And... Click on programs. Got it. Okay. So don't forget. Jeez. This is Minutes by Minutes. I'm Elgin Nichols. Dave Kenny. Catch you next time right here.